Hey, this is Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kringen, Seattle, and I'm wearing my Tom Petty top hat. It says TP right there. I painted this uh, in 1992. I painted this for Tom Petty. I'd like to say Tom Petty widens my jetty. Um, that's symbolic of many different things that are kind of my own secret code. And this is another top hat that I painted more recently in my own Kring design. And I wanted to talk about happy birthday to Tom Petty, one of my favorite songwriters who passed away six years ago, I guess, 2017, he passed away. Uh, his birthday is October 20th, 1950. So he would have been 73. I'm recording this on October 19th, 2023, but his birthday is October 20th. So I'm going to be publishing this on October 20th, his actual birthday, which I consider a holiday in my own life. And as cheesy as that sounds, his music is very important to me. I never met the actual man, Thomas Earl Petty, uh, but I was very familiar with his music ever since I was 11 years old. I grew up in San Diego, California, and my parents divorced when I was four, which was a little bit difficult, although I don't remember the actual divorce, but I remember going back and forth between my mom and my dad and seeing my dad on weekends. And when I was nine, we decided, my mom decided we were going to move away from San Diego up to Whidbey Island, Washington. And I was really missing my dad when I was 11 years old in 1979 on Whidbey Island in a pizza parlor called Gay 90s Pizza. And I might've told this story before on YouTube video camera broadcasts of Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring, but I'm just going to say it again in honor of Tom Petty's birthday. Thank you so much, Mr. Tom Petty, for following your dream your whole life uh, ever since you were 11 years old and you met Elvis Presley on the set of a movie called Follow That Dream, which is poetic and beautiful and like synchronistic. The synchronicity that I felt when I heard your song, Refugee, by Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. I was 11 years old, and let's just say, let's fast forward from I was nine years old in San Diego, and I really loved my dad, and I really love my grandparents, and I liked the beach and the sunshine. So my mom decided we're going to go up to Washington and get away from the family and move to Washington State because she wanted a fresh start. Now, I was nine years old. I did not want a fresh start, but my mom did, so I went with my mom. And I reluctantly moved from San Diego to Whidbey Island, Washington. And I was 11 at this point when I first heard Tom Petty. So this video, I am a hard time staying on topic. So I'm going to really try hard. Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring is going to just talk about Tom Petty. Happy birthday, Tom Petty. Even though you're not on this planet Earth anymore. Your soul is still here and your, I mean, your, your soul is with all of us who love your music, your family, your friends, your fellow musicians and fans like me, you know, music lovers like me who really, really appreciate your full body of work. I don't just like the hits. I like, especially the unusual songs. I don't really love the term deep cuts, but some of my favorite Tom Petty songs are the deep cuts. Um, are the unusual songs like Pirate's Cove, Shadow People, Turn This Car Around, Luna, You and I Will Meet Again, Built to Last. Um, so many songs from every album. The, the last four or five albums are some of my favorites. Mojo, The Last DJ, Highway Companion, Hypnotic Eye some beautiful, beautiful, beautiful songs on those records. And every record has its own texture and its own style and its own mood. And apparently Tom Petty was very particular in the track order. You know, he labored over, <clears throat> excuse me, the track order. <clears throat> Need a sip of sparkling water. 
apparently Tom Petty uh, <clears throat> really took great care in choosing the track order and the songs that would end up on each album. Uh, he was very particular about that. Uh, my other favorite musician, Tori Amos, also is notorious for being very careful in how she stacks the tracks on each album. And also Tori Amos, I love her newer songs, sometimes more than their older songs, but I also enjoy Tori Amos's full body of work. But focus, 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 hocus, pocus, focus. This is about Tom Petty's music and why I love it so much. So I was 11 years old and I was missing San Diego, California and missing my dad and missing my grandparents and missing my friends in San Diego and missing sunshine and the ocean and just the living in the suburbs of San Diego versus living on Woodby Island in the middle of the forest. Although I did have good friends, I made kid friends on Whidbey Island and my mom put me in alternative school. So that was good. But I heard refugee on the jukebox in gay nineties pizza in green bank on Whidbey Island. And I literally went, Oh my God, what is this? And I ran, I mean, literally we were eating pizza. My friends, Stephanie and my mom and I, I think we had gay weird Weird Harold's Combination was the name of the pizza. Weird Harold's Combination, which was, I think, a bunch of meats and vegetables and cashews. It was a delicious pizza flavor. And I ran over to the jukebox and I went, oh my God, what is this? The guitar, the refugee, the chords in refugee, the lyrics, the voice. I had no idea who the band was, never heard them before. Um didn't hear their other songs till later. The first Tom Petty song I ever remember hearing was Refugee. And the sound, the notes, the melody, the organ, the keyboards mixed with the guitar, that sort of Bob Dylan-y kind of sound that they have, like they sound like the birds and Bob Dylan and the Beatles and the Rolling Stones all swirled together. A little bit of Buddy Holly and Elvis Presley thrown in. And Roy Orbison and all of that jazz, like old time rock and roll, Chuck Berry, mixed in with a more birdsy, Beatlesy, Bob Dylan-y modern sound, and except for good music is just classic. It's it's classic, not classic, timeless. When they refer to Tom Petty as classic rock, it kind of drives me nuts because what does that even mean? It's like kind of cliche, but it's like good music. How about just good music, whether it's new or old, doesn't matter to me. If it's good music, it's good music. So I heard Refugee and I was like, oh my God, who, who is this? What is this? Wow. And my friend Stephanie was with me and she said, oh, this is Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Haven't you ever heard that? You know, my brother has this record. So she told me, and I was like, wow, I need to listen to this whole record. You know, what are the other songs on this record? I wonder. Um, so I went, and to make a long story short, I borrowed Damn the Torpedoes, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. And when I heard the music, it made me feel better because I was feeling sad and angry about leaving California. And I didn't even fully know what the word refugee meant. You know, I knew about people starving in Africa, refugees that needed you know, emergency type situation, life or death, need a home. That's like what an actual refugee is. When Tom Petty says, don't have to live like a refugee, kind of like it's when Madonna says, like a virgin. It's not like literally a virgin, literally a refugee. It's a play on words and a metaphor for feeling like as emotionally upset as a refugee and or feeling like a virgin in a positive way in the Madonna song. It's a positive, like a virgin, you know, the lyrics to that song. It's a, it's a metaphor. So I loved it. It made me feel better. It became, I just remember I loved, I fell in love with the song, love at first listen. And then I, I ended up painting this hat for him in 1992 and every, cause I, I'm, I'm famous. I'm famous. I'm famous for painting. I painted shoes for Tori Amos. I contacted Tori Amos's fan club. And in 1996, she wore on stage hand painted shoes. Here's a couple, <laughs> a couple pair of, here's some boots that I painted. Kring style, Kring wear, I call it. And here is recent sandals that I painted, but for Tori Amos, 
um, I painted high heels. So I painted high heel shoes in Tori Amos wear size seven. I painted those. Here are some other artworks of mine. I guess I'm going a little bit off topic, but this is some of my art. I was commissioned to do a woman's torso with a heart shapes on it. So I'm working on this for a zine that somebody commissioned me for. And this is a eight by eight inch canvas that I'm painting with acrylics. And this is the top hat I painted for Tom Petty. So these are just three examples of some of my art. I do kind of a very abstract style. So back to the Tom Petty widens my jetty. Tori Amos doesn't blame us, but names us. Neil Young washes away the fertile dung. Um, Mick Jagger struts in his dagger grabs me. I, I take famous people that I like th that I'm inspired by and I, I rhyme it and make interesting poems. Uh, bada boo, bada bing, goddess cring, let it seep from deep within, etc. cetera. Um, I really, really loved uh, Refugee. And then I borrowed the record from uh, Stephanie. Stephanie had a brother named Dane. I borrowed the record from Dane and listen to first I just was obsessed with the song Refugee and I listened to it over and over and over and over to the point where my mom said play another song play another song because I used to play the stereo loud in the living room at my mom's house where I lived and I'm an only child so I had no brothers and no sisters and so I used to listen to lots of music in the living room my mom would be in her art studio couple hundred yards from the house in a separate building so I could crank up the stereo and I used to dance and sing and have private little imaginary concerts in my living room I had like a blue light that I would shine and pretend like it was moonlight and then I had Christmas lights around the living room and I would sing along with Joan Baez and Blondie and David Bowie and the Rolling Stones and the Doors and Tom Petty so and Elvis Presley and, and things like that so I loved music from a young age. My dad raised me with folk and rock music and my mom really liked classical and jazz music. So between the two of my parents who divorced, I got lots of good music being played around me. My parents both have very good taste in music. And so I listened to Refugee over and over and over. And then I listened to the whole record. And then I realized when I first saw what Tom Petty because first I just heard the voice refugee and I love the sound of the voice and my dad used to play a lot of Bob Dylan and I was like ooh, it kind of reminds me of a Bob Dylan -y kind of Bob Dylan kind of birdsy Bob Dylan -y kind of I, I didn't really know a lot about the birds when I was 11 years old but I knew the turn 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 song um, and the overall sound being from Southern California I kind of knew that Laurel Canyon, Crosby, Steels, Nash, and Young sound of, of California rock and roll. I love that movie Echo in the Canyon starring Tom Petty and that Jacob Dylan made a few years ago. That's a whole nother story. But I love the music of Tom Petty and I saw what he looked like on the cover of Damn the Torpedoes. And when I was a little kid in San Diego, I used to always have crushes on the little blonde hair, blue eyed little boys who rode around on their little skateboards. So when I saw Tom Petty, at, when I was 11, I saw Tom Petty as an adult and I went, wow, this looks like one of those little boys I had a crush on who grew up into an adult man. I'd like to date a guy like this when I, when I grow up or whatever. I was only 11. So I wasn't dating anyone at that point, but let's just say that I had a huge crush on Tom Petty instantly when I heard Refugee and then I saw what he looked like, I thought, wow, what a handsome guy. What an interesting, handsome person he is. So little did I know when I was 11, when I fell in love with Damn the Torpedoes, I ended up listening to the whole record. Ironically, the song Don't Do Me Like That is my least favorite song on that record. I like every song on that record, Damn the Torpedoes, every single song I love. Don't Do Me Like That was also another hit, but it wasn't my favorite but I like that song and it actually it's grown on me over the years, but it's just never been my favorite Tom Petty song, but I love that record. And he became a symbol to me. I was going to say, I don't remember when I decided this, but Tom Petty became a symbol because a lot of his song lyrics, part of why I love him so much is that a lot of his song lyrics are kind of about, um, 
don't let things get you down and just keep on pushing through and do what you believe in, <clears throat> do what you love. And you could just hear it in his voice. And later on in life, I learned about his childhood and it's a whole nother story. There's a four hour documentary I love by Peter Bogdanovich called running down a dream. It's a beautiful documentary and Eddie Vedder is in it and it's, it's beautiful. And it's a four hour documentary, which I've seen several times. I own a copy of it. So I love the more I learned about Tom Petty, like I started off listening when I was 11 and I had down the torpedoes. And then I, and then I got his first two, cause that's his third record. I got Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. His third record is down the torpedoes. I got the first two records after that. Um, and then I would just get the new Tom Petty record, like from 1979 all the way to 2014. I got every single Tom Petty record, the Traveling Wilburys, the Tom Petty solo, the Tom Petty. Uh, my dad and I went and saw Tom Petty and Bob Dylan on tour together. And because my dad introduced me to Bob Dylan music and I introduced my dad to Tom Petty music. Um, and we thought it was great when they went on tour together. Uh, so little did I know when I was 11 that I would love every record they ever put out, like really, like seriously, like I'm picky. And if I didn't genuine, cause there's some musicians like the Rolling Stones, I love the Rolling Stones, but I don't love every song they've ever done. I don't love every track on every record with Tom Petty. There's no filler on those records. Like every song is good. Even the, the weakest songs are still pretty good. Like there's an album called Echo, which I love. And Tom himself said it was not his favorite. He was going through a hard time at that point, And he thought it wasn't his best work. Well, maybe that's true in a certain way. There's a couple songs on there that I'm not completely thrilled with. What is it? I forgot the names of them actually. But I love the record Echo. But I would just say, okay, if I had to critique, I would say Echo has some of the weakest songs. A couple songs are a little bit weak compared to his body of work. Um, but the album Echo has room at the top, One More Day, One More Night, Rhino Skin, Swingin', all kinds of cool songs on that one. That's from 1999, I think, or 2001. Let's see last DJ. I don't know. I'm getting confused about what year, which album came out, but let's just say that I have every record and I know every record. And that's the only band I'm like that about. I don't, I don't, I'm not fanatical. I'm not like fanatical, but I basically, I painted this hat for him in 1992. I painted shoes for Tori Amos in 1996. So before I even painted shoes for Tori, I painted, um, this hat for Tom Petty and his, um, there's even a picture of me on the inside of it. I wrote, I wrote, what did I write? I wrote for Tom. Thank you for inspiring me to Tom Petty, love Shannon. And then I, and then I put cream wear. And then there's a picture of me in here huh, as a 20 something year old with hand painted boots. Um, so that's the hat that I painted for Tom Petty that I never met him. I never actually met him. I saw him live many times in concert, but I never actually met him. Um, I didn't really try very hard to meet him, but every day for six months, I hand painted, I made postcards. I Xeroxed off a four up on a sheet of eight and a half by 11 because I have background, background and graphic design. So it's easy for me to make postcards and do four up on a page. So I did four up on a page and I Xerox them off and cut them. And I hand painted with markers and glitter, fingernail polish glitter every day for six months, except I skipped Sunday. So six days a week, I would mail them to his fan club in Encino, California, because I thought, I bet you he gets a lot of fan mail and they're not even going to notice my mail at all, unless I really get their attention. So I would hand paint the cards every single day and I would go to the post office and I would mail it. I got a bunch of stamps and I would just every day I go to the mailbox, mail, mail, mail a postcard to Tom Petty, mail a postcard to Tom Petty's fan club, mail every single day. I did that for six months. And his first wife, Jane Petty, actually wrote me back because I think she used to help run his fan club. His first wife, I think, was his high school sweetheart. They married, were together for 20 years, had two kids, long story, had a long marriage, really loved each other, divorced. Then he met a second wife, Dana, long story, whatever. I have had interactions with both Jane and I know it sounds weird, but 
with Jane and Dana. Um, Dana is on Instagram and sharing her grief with us. And I've sent some heartfelt, she's kind and, and sweet and generous. And she's sent some little, you know, heart, heart um, comments to people that say positive things to her and inspirational things to her. And that's a whole nother story, but I painted this hat for him. And then his, his uh, first wife, Jane wrote me and said, hope you can dig Tom's real busy. Remember to vote rock the vote in 92. She said like something like, I can't find the postcard. I look for it. I can't find it, but it's around somewhere. It's probably on my Flickr. If you go to my Shannon Kringen Flickr, I put it there somewhere. I put a photo I took a photo of the Xerox of his face. It was his face on Rolling Stone magazine that I Xeroxed and then I would hand paint the hat every single time I would hand paint it on there. So it was like black and white Xerox with colored. And and uh, Dana said, I don't know why we didn't write you sooner. Hope you, They probably thought I was nuts. They probably did. They probably thought this lady is a little crazy, whatever. They probably thought that, whatever. Okay, that's fine. But I just said I would love to meet Tom and give him this hat. I really love his music. Thank you so much for inspiring me, Tom Petty, blah, blah, blah. So I just said some positive things and I would hand sign it each time. So his first wife wrote me, hope you can dig. Can't guarantee you could meet him. I think Tom Petty, I found out later, doesn't really, he didn't really like to meet a lot of fans. He loved to perform on stage, but he wasn't really into hanging out with fans and doing that kind of thing. Um, and I don't even care about autographs. I'm not one of those fans that wants autographs, although having a selfie with Tom Petty would have been fun and just sitting and talking with him for a couple of minutes would have been fun, but never mind. I just love the music. It's all about the music for me. So I painted this for Tom. <laughs> Silly. Painted shoes for Tori. Tori Amos actually wore the shoes they painted her uh, for her on stage in 1996. That's what I was thinking this morning when I was half asleep. I was thinking how sad it is I think it's really kind of cool that I had this idea. I would love to meet Tori, paint shoes for her and give them to her. And that I manifested that dream. I contacted her fan club. I figured out how to connect and they gave me her shoe size, size seven. I painted shoes for her and met her. I got to say, thank you for your music. You inspire me, et cetera. <clears throat> but the whole, and then, okay. And then painting a hat for Tom Petty, like what's the big whoop de do? Like at least I connected with, the person that helped his run his fam club, I connected. And I think that that's really nice, but what is really my goal? Like what I was thinking of is, okay, this video is about Tom Petty. This is about why I'm inspired. Okay. A lot of his song lyrics are about, um, stick to your guns, go for it, do your, do your thing, follow your passion, trust yourself, uh, follow your intuition, follow your heart. Um, you know, don't let the nasty people get you down and just keep on, keep on keeping on and trust yourself. And that's kind of like what all of his lyrics are about. And it turns out that his father was verbally abusive to him and thought that he would not be successful in the music world and wasn't very encouraging of him following his dream. Whereas his mother said, um, you can do anything you want, son, follow your dreams. Although she was frail and then ended up passing away when he in 1981 or 83 i can't remember what year that was but his mother basically passed away when he was still in his 30s where his dad lived a long time so his dad was kind of mean and his mom was kind of nice so between his two parents he had this extreme dynamic and the more i found out about his life story and then the tr the troubles the struggles he had as a child um and how um, music really saved him from kind of a depressed, slightly depressing upbringing. And um, just, it's a long story, but I just have a personal connection. And I know everyone that loves his music because there's lots of people who love his music, similar to how I do. Lots of us. Um, we identify, we have a certain kind of woundedness, I think. And we resonate with this feeling of oh yeah, well, I'm going to do it anyway, kind of a thing. Like nobody's going to stop me from doing what I love. And if you're going to make fun of me, I'm not going to listen. I'm just going to keep doing it. And what's cool about Tom too, is his attitude about people compared him to Bob Dylan and the birds early on. And Roger McGuinn, apparently from the birds even said, when did I write that song? When he heard American girl on the radio and somebody said, Hey, that's Tom Petty. And he's like, when did I write that? And then he, Tom Petty, instead of feeling embarrassed 
Because some people, if they are compared to another musician, they would feel embarrassed about it. Like, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to copy somebody else. Instead, he was like, wow, I didn't, I love those people that you're mentioning, the Birds and Bob Dylan. I love what they do. The Beatles, the Rolling Stones, the Birds, Bob Dylan. I love what they do. I didn't even know we could sound like these people. So he took it as a compliment that they should just keep going and continue like making good records and just keep making a good song and then another good song. And I mean, he said that he just did it one step at a time. One good song, one good song, one good song, make a whole good record. Um, so it's inspirational. So there's so many reasons why I find his music inspirational. So I painted this hat. I never got to meet him. I'm a little bit embarrassed uh, that I I wrote his fan club every day for six months. And then his wife, and then as soon as she wrote me back, I stopped because I didn't want them to think I was like, obsessively going to keep trying to meet him because, you know, when you have fanatical fans, it probably is weird. So I didn't have any like weird intentions other than I would like to literally wanted to meet him and give him this hat or, or paint him a guitar strap or something like that, whatever, who cares? It doesn't matter. Didn't need to do that. But I was thinking manifesting ocean beam, come clean, come clean, manifesting dreams, inner energy, life force, come forth. Ocean beam, come clean, come clean, manifesting dreams, volcano ash erupting green, enchanted thinkers filtering. These are some of the lines in my poems. I've written a lot of poetry. I wish I was a musician. I'm not really. I'm experimenting and doing some musical things with Dave Flowers from Interactive Jack Records. Um, so I have dabbled in music a little bit. I'm mostly a visual artist. And what else? So I just want to say happy birthday to Tom Petty. I guess I'm not going to ramble on too long. Happy birthday to Tom Petty. Tom Petty, you widen my jetty with your music. In other words, you widen my jetty, meaning you reinforce whatever's fragile and insecure about me. Your music reminds me to be strong. This is why I love his music, Tom Petty's music and the Heartbreakers. I recently saw Mike Campbell and his band, The Dirty Knobs at the Crocodile in Seattle a little bit over a year ago, and it was a great show. Even though Mike Campbell's not a great singer, a little off key, I love Mike Campbell. He's an amazing guitar player and he's a beautiful person, heart and soul and all that jazz. So I loved seeing his band, The Dirty Knobs, and then um, Stan Lynch, the original Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers drummer was there that night because the other drummer couldn't be there from The Dirty Knobs. So I did see, and I recently saw Cut Worms also at The Crocodile and The Cut Worms is an amazing band um they're in their 30s and they sound kind of like the everly brothers and buddy holly and roy orbison and old elvis presley old like good old time music from the 50s or 60s and for some reason that resonates with me about tom petty and the heartbreakers good music is timeless it's not old or new it's timeless but what was i gonna say so his music over the years has, has, um, I think that mo maybe anybody who's really into music uses the music to help validate themselves. And so when I listen to lots of Tom Petty lyrics, it makes me feel validated and like not so lonely. I, I think music to me is like a friend. It's, it's similar. It's not a friend because it's, it's just a song, but it's like an imaginary friend. It's like something about listening to music I like helps me tap into my imagination and a dreamlike state. And songwriters, I write a lot of poetry. I wish that I could turn it into songs. I'm sort of trying to do that a little bit, but that's not really my biggest talent, turning my poems into song lyrics and melodies, although I'm trying that and working on that a little bit. But I really admire songwriters. And I listen to lyrics carefully. I listen to the lyrics. I don't really like reading a lot of poetry. I'm a little dyslexic and I don't love to read. I love to write in my journal and I love to listen to music and I love to watch movies and listen to the dialogue that actors have in movies and the screenplay, listening to basically what the writer created in the screenplay when I watch a movie. So I'm more of an auditory person. So music really resonates with me. And I listen to lots of music every day. I listen to music. So whether it's instrumental or so Tom Petty, happy birthday, Tom Petty. Thank you for all the music that you gave us from 
19 what's 1974 or 75 is when they i think 1974 they released their first record and then all the way up to 2014 so 1974 to 2014 that's a long span of music that covers the decades and um, i am just really happy that i can continue listening and my friend dave flowers loves prince as much as i love tom petty so Dave Flowers is helping me find unusual, rare Tom Petty recordings and um, um, things I've never heard before. And the family of Tom Petty is releasing unreleased things. And, and there's a special movie called Somewhere You Feel Free, The Making of Wildflowers and um, produced by Rick Rubin. And that's a beautiful movie that I've seen and I want to see it again. So I'm going to publish this on October 20th, 2023, which will be Tom Petty's 73rd birthday. It would have been rest in peace, Tom Petty. Thank you so much for all the music that you created and for following your dream and being an example of, and you know, I'm not going to let somebody make fun of me. I, I, I am a sense, I'm sensitive to the criticism I've received when you sort of name drop and you mention like famous people's names. Um, but what makes Tom Petty special is not that he was famous. What makes him, I know about him because he was famous, but what, what's special about him is his actual music. Like I care about the actual songs and the actual music. And another reason why I admire him is because he stayed very grounded. People that knew him as a real person, um, said that he was very humble and grounded in reality. And he was never like, caught up in fame or caught up in his own ego about oh, I'm Tom Petty, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, he wasn't, he was genuinely always in love with the music and always trying to just make good music and was happy to play with Johnny Cash and Bob Dylan and George Harrison and didn't know that that was going to happen. Like he was open to it. That's another thing I like about him is that he seemed open to success but not shallow and full of his own ego and chasing success for silly reasons, for ego gratification. He seemed to genuinely love music and want to create the best music that he could and play with sound. And he was a very sensitive person to sound and a very emotional person and a very, it seemed very intelligent. You know, I never met him, but he just seemed very intelligent. And I've listened to interviews and conversations with him and listen to his family talk about him in the four hour documentary and his two daughters and his two wives and um, his bandmates and all that jazz. And so just inspirational. And so, so when I name drop Tom Petty, it, it's not in a shallow, it's not, it's silly. It's not, it's, it's, it's silly. And even Tom Petty himself, this is another kinship I feel with him. He apparently knew everything about Elvis Presley. He was really into knowing everything about Elvis because he was fascinated. He met Elvis when he was 11. And I first heard Tom Petty when I was 11. So people ask me about Tom Petty and I start telling them, he's like, did you meet? And I, did you know the guy? I'm like, no, I never knew the guy. So apparently Tom Petty would talk about Elvis and his family or friends would say, did you ever, did you know him? I mean, yeah, I shook his hand once when I was 11, but I never really knew him, but he just learned his, one of his daughters, one of Tom Petty's daughters said that when he was into something, his brain was like a sponge and he was very, if he was interested in something, he would learn everything about it. So it wasn't just Elvis. He knew about, he used to watch a lot of black and white movies apparently, and, and he would get books on whatever topic he was interested in, or maybe he learned everything about Rick and Bacher, Rick and Bacher, Rick and Bacher, Bacher, Bacher. I don't know how you say that good kind of guitar, but he probably knew everything about Rick and Bacher, Rick and Bacher guitars too, or amps, Fender amps or whatever the amps are called or the Vox, Vox and Fender amps or something. Uh, I'm friends with a guy who um, plays in a rock and roll cover band. And he said he likes the amps that Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers used. Um, they used old style amps in like the, Beatles um, style amps. I don't know what those are called, but the Vox or vendor vendors and boxes or something. I don't know. Um, uh, music nerds out there would know, but uh, there's just so many things. I don't know if I really explained it very well. And it's so hard for me to stay on topic, but when I, when I name drop Tori Amos or Tom Petty, I'm not saying that it's not the fame that they have that has the power. It's the music it's the actual music um there are local musicians i love like jason webley 
um, Jesse Sykes, Rafe Perlman, Gina Salah. These are some local Seattle people that are not super famous. The thing about fame is that when somebody's famous, then you can say the name and then other people know it. So it's not about the fame. It's about the actual music that's known by people so that you can say, I like Tom Petty music and they can say, okay, but there's so much more to the, who, to his music than just the hits. But I guess everybody who loves a band thinks that about their band. Like maybe some people do just like the hits, but that's another thing. He, he was open to success, but he wasn't, um, and he wanted to write a hit song, but he wasn't, he didn't think that that meant he was selling out or shallow. It's, it seemed, he seemed to have a very positive grounded attitude about doing a full body of work and about how an album could have a few hit singles on it, but every song is going to be a good song. And again, like a face in the crowd is one of my favorite songs from full moon fever. And that's not the hit. That's the more unusual song, the more quiet ballad kind of song, a woman in love is one of my favorite songs from Hard Promises. And the hit from that album is The Waiting. And the hit from Full Moon Fever is Free Fallen and I Won't Back Down and Running Down a Dream. But my favorite song on Free on Full Moon Fever is um, A Face in the Crowd. My favorite song on Highway Companion is Turn This Car Around. My favorite song on Mojo is uh, Pirate's Cove. My favorite song on Echo is Echo, the song Echo, I think. Um, my favorite song on The Last DJ oh, oh, I forgot the name of it. It's one of the last songs on The Last DJ. It's called um, it reminds me of a John Lennon song. It says something about be sure to wash your hands. Hey, Mr. Businessman, be sure to wash your hands. I can't remember the name of that song, but I love that song. I love on most of his record, Tom Penny and the Heartbreakers is records. I love the more, oh yeah, Crawling Back to You on Wildflowers, which Tom said was one of his favorite songs that he ever wrote. Interesting note about the Seattle concert when he played the last tour that he did in Seattle 2014. 2014, 2017, no, 2017. The last tour he did in Seattle was in, I think in August in 2017. And he said, we've had a request. He doesn't take requests. And so he's like, we have a request. And he said, I requested it. And then he said, I'm going to play one of my favorite songs that I ever did. And it was um, Crawling Back to You from Wildflowers. But there was a tech difficulty when that happened. When he started playing that song, the power went out. And for the entire song, they the band didn't know it. And the band played the whole song and we couldn't hear it. It was just acoustic. It was no elect electric, no amplification happening. And it was weird because I was hoping, because because they mostly played the hits on the 40th anniversary tour. And those are not my favorite songs. I love the hits, but I wanted to hear the more unusual songs and the more obscure songs. Um, so crawling back to you, I did not get to hear in Seattle, even though they played it, but there was no application. And then they fixed the technical difficulty and then they played the rest of the show normal. That was very strange. It was a little bittersweet for me on, in that moment, but that's okay. Okay. So Tom Petty, happy birthday. And my birthday is coming up October 25th, 2023. I will be 55 years old, 55. I'm 55, 55 years old. So Thanks for listening. This is Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring. Um, I hope I stayed mostly on topic. I don't know if I really went as in-depth as I wanted to, but I love Tom Petty's music for so many different reasons. And it's very personal. And maybe I don't need to explain everything about it. I feel like it's a shamanic, it's a shamanic, I once took a shamanic journeying class over 20 years ago. And the person wanted us to, do sort of hypnotherapy in a birch canoe, birch, what do they call them? Birch bark canoe. And I was supposed to pick two spirit guides, animals. I love animals. I was going to maybe pick a goat and a cat or something like that, but instead it was Tom Petty and Tori Amos. And I, I asked the spirit 
um, shamanic journey um, leader, can I pick humans that I love the music of? Because they're mythic figures to me. Because I don't, I don't know Tori Amos and Tom Petty as regular humans. I just knew them as musicians that I love their songs of. So I have a relationship with their music and their songs. So I had Tom Petty and Tori Amos were like my spirit guides on my shamanic journey. So I think of Tom Petty and Tori Amos as both symbolic of, of um, following your dreams, following your heart and your soul, trusting your intuition. So it's not as shallow as it sounds when I mention these famous people's names. It's not about their fame. It's about their actual music. For Tori Amos, I love her song, Bats and Bang from Native Invader and then Ocean to Ocean. I love, what is that song on that? I love that whole record, the new record, Ocean to Ocean, Tori Amos, beautiful record. Um, I'm not remembering the track names, but what I love about Tom Petty and Tori Amos's albums is you can listen to the entire album all the way through and there's good songs all the way through and the track list seems appropriately, beautifully, like chapters in a book, like very well-crafted, well-chosen one through 10 or however many songs, 12 songs on, on, you know, a record or whatever, 10 or 12 songs, usually uh, very well-crafted, very beautifully done. Very, I know not everybody feels this way about Tom Petty and Tori Amos, but I do. I once requested Tori Amos play a Tom Petty song and she's like, Oh, she's like, I'm not that familiar with his music, but my husband is a big fan of his, uh, which was interesting to me. And she sort of played Free Falling and mixed it up with Sarah McLaughlin Building a Mystery, which was an interesting combination. Building Mystery and Free Falling, very different songs, interesting. I couldn't figure out what song to ask her to play. I wish that I had said Into the Great Wide Open or something different than or refugee, actually, I think Tori Amos could do refugee in a very different way, in a very feminine kind of way. Tori Amos is famous for covering, she did a great cover of Nirvana's Smells Like Teen Spirit. So I imagine Tori Amos could do a really good cover of refugee. Um, yeah. Okay. I also love the song You Tell Me from Damn the Torpedoes trying to think of all my favorite luna i love the song luna from the one of the first two is it the first album or the second album there's one album called you're gonna get it i think the first album is just called tom petty and the heartbreakers and the second album is called you're gonna get it i think luna and magnolia those are two of my favorite older songs from the first two records magnolia luna trip to pirate's cove jumps out Shadow People from Hypnotic Eye. I love that song, Shadow People. I love the song, Rhino Skin. Um, I love, yeah, Turn This Car Around from Highway Companion. Love that one. Love the soundtrack he did, Tom Petty did for the movie, She's the One. There's a beautiful song on there called California. And... Um, Supernatural Radio is also a beautiful song. And Angel Dream, Angel Dream, Supernatural Radio, California, Walls is a beautiful song. Part of Me is Ocean, Part of Me is Sky. Uh, some days are diamonds, some days are rocks. Some roads are open, some roads are blocked. You and I will meet again. I actually auditioned for Cornish College of the Arts here in Seattle for the acting conservatory. And I had to do a scene from Shakespeare and a scene from a Sam Shepard play. And I had to sing a song a cappella. And I chose the Tom Petty song, You and I Will Meet Again. And I, I sang, uh, let's see, Blackwing, right? Oh, shoot. I should have looked up the lyrics. A red wing hawk is circling. The black top stretches out for days. How could I get so close to you and still feel so far away? Someday all the rules will bend. You and I will meet again. Those are some of the lyrics for that song. But 
A red winged hawk is circling. The black top stretches out for days. How could I get so close to you and still feel so far away? Um, yeah, just there's so many beautiful lyrics. There's like um, green and gray and auburn sliding down the sky. The devil winks an eye. That's from like um, um, turn this car around from from uh highway companion there's so many beautiful lyrics like i really listen to the lyrics and just beautiful rhymes and just beautiful poetic visual you know i've written some interesting poetry i'm very inspired by songwriters um i don't really read a lot of actual poetry i appreciate poets in the world i appreciate all the writers and poets in the world i'm just not a very i'm dyslexic and not a very good reader so I like listening to audiobooks of poetry more than actually reading poetry. Although what I really like is to listen to music and I listen to the lyrics of the songs and the dialogue in movies. I also listen to very carefully. So I love music very much. And I wrote a new poem ripple effect. And I was interviewed about for my art, about my art car by the Everett Herald. Uh, recently, and that's published in uh, uh, Andrea Brown is a journalist, and she wrote a column called um, What's Up With That? And I think it's, oh, I can't remember the name of the photographer, but this really nice lady took four pictures of me and published it into the Everett Herald, and I'm excited about my art car, my rhinestone art car, and there, okay, I rambled on. So I know I didn't just talk about Tom Petty, but I tried to focus on why I love Tom Petty's music and Terry Amos's music, and it's all connected. And this is Goddess Kring, Shannon Kring, and signing out for the night. I am going to publish this video on October 20th, 2023. Happy 73rd birthday. It would have been Tom Petty's 73rd, so I'm going to celebrate by listening to music and sing a prayer for Tom Petty's soul and... Um, probably watch that movie somewhere you'll feel free the making of wildflowers which i think is streaming online tomorrow um which is today because i'm going to publish this on october 20th 2023 and my birthday is october 25th and happy birthday to tom petty and happy birthday to me coming up and happy birthday to anybody else watching this if it's your birthday around this time of year yay for libra scorpio people Bye for now. This is Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring. Bye for now. Hope that this video was inspirational. Please like and subscribe my video if you want. That would be cool. I'm also still working on uh, new music with Dave Flowers from Interactive Jack Records. And I'm also figuring out my Goddess Kring archive program. I have over 700 Goddess Kring videos that I might put some of the best ones online somewhere for people to watch because they only aired on public access tv once in seattle so there it is for that okay bye for now hope i said everything bye there's the light Ooh, it's changing okay bye